you find your seat, place your palms down along your thighs. Sit up tall through the spine. Take a moment to turn your gaze low or close the eyes if that's comfortable. Take a few deep breaths here in and out. mindset for practice. This is our 45 minute power yoga practice. And I asked you to do that simple thing of turning palms down along the thighs as a way of tuning in and really turning on for this time on the back. having a rough day on Friday. And after exhausting a few measures that were only making it harder, I rolled out my mat with the mindset to really move through and experience what was happening in that outer life off of the mat in the practice. And it was truly helpful Times there's a place to tune out and to set things aside when we do our movement practice. I'm not saying that's wrong, just that sometimes tuning in can be just as or more helpful. In this 45 minutes, keep checking in. One more breath right here. And as you exhale, nod the chin down to your chest and rock right ear over towards the right shoulder. Let the head move back over towards the left and then chin back down to the chest. Do it one more time towards the right side, full head roll. And then change two full head rolls to the second direction. early on in the day. I always find that head roll pretty difficult. Feel free to move your body, upper body, kind of with it to help along. All right, we'll lift the chin. Gently open your eyes and stretch your arms up to the sky. Big full reach. Set them down towards the right side and twist. Inhale, full reach up to the sky. Exhale, set them down to the left side, twist. One more time, lift up to the sky. This time, fold over your center and then keep crawling over the legs until you've changed to child's pose. So take child's pose here. Inhale and come up to all fours. Push the earth away, round the back for cat. And then change to cow. Let the belly drop down, pull the chest forward. Eyes and tailbone towards the sky. One more time, round the back for cat pose. Excuse me. And into cow. Drop the belly, pull the chest through. Eyes and tailbone, lift high. Neutral spine, tuck the toes, extend the arms a little more forward for downward facing dog. Lift the hips all the way up and back. Pedal out the feet for a moment. Let the head shake a little side to side. Let the hips move as well. Tuning in to this first downward facing dog. And then inhale, come forward to plank position. One push up here from your knees or from the toes, lower down and push back up. And then downward facing dog. And we'll repeat that four more times. You come forward, push up from knees or toes, downward facing dog. Come forward, push up. 
course, the option to hold plank instead of the movement of the push-up. We're looking for five repetitions here. Get things going nice and warm right off the bat and then stay in downward facing dog. Breath in, breath out. Lower down to your knees, bird dog pose. Lift the right leg up and back. Extend the left arm out in front, opposite arm and leg. Pull the elbow and knee in, tap it in for one, and extend, tap it in for two. Extend two more times here, three, extend, and four. Extend, lower the left hand, lower the right knee. Second side, pick up the left leg, extend the right arm. Pause for a breath. Add the movement, elbow and knee tap in, and extend, tap in. Extend, really hug knee high up into the chest each time you pull in. Last time right there and then lower down to all fours. Right into tremulous pose, cross your right calf over the left, sit back towards your heels. Take your hands close to the knees, keep your feet on the ground, but lift your knees up, round the back like cat pose. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Stay on this side, sit your butt down to your heels, try to glue the lower half of your body together. And then we're gonna try to pick everything up in one unit. Press hands down and lift. Try it one more time, press your hands down, lift. And then we switch to the second side. Left calf over the right, a little bit of sawing there to release the calf muscle. You sit back onto the heels. Okay, remember hands down, knees up, feet down, lift, hold, round the back, and release the hold. We've got those two baby lifts. I like to move my hands a little further back for these. It's still that round forward of the chest and shoulders to help with the effort. Push down through the hands, lift, it can be a little bit of a jump, but we're trying to just lift as much as we can. Release it all out. Silly little tremulous pose, downward facing dog. And that's exactly what I'm saying to myself. I'm gonna try my best effort. Tune into what's working here. Pedal it out now and downward facing dog. From here, we're changing to boat pose, which means we're gonna jump down to our butt and extend the arms and legs forward in boat pose, Navasana. Of course, the jump through can be a sit and extend through. Find me right here, boat pose, stay nice and lifted, and then we're gonna move it up and down three times for canoe or half boat, lower down and lift up. Lower down and lift up. One more time, lower down and lift up. A step, a sit, a jump through, back to downward facing dog. Oh, the fun, back and forth. <laughs> Bend the knees and walk your hands backwards to your feet. So we end up at the end of the yoga mat. And slowly come on up to standing, roll through, roll the shoulders up, back, and down a couple of times. Good, and then forward and down as well. Crescent stretch with the feet together, lift the arms up to the sky. Cross at your thumbs, or you can even interlace the entire hand. Lean over towards your right side and bump your hips to the left here. Try to broaden across the shoulders, even look to the sky. Inhale, come back to center and take it over to the second side. It's 
squeeze in the glutes, press down through your feet, get that nice long side body stretch. Looking great, come back to the center. Separate the hands, I like to separate the feet. This is Uttkatasana, bend the knees, sit into the thighs. Chair pose. Try to keep the torso quite vertical here. Sit only as low in the legs as that works. And then we're changing, arms go shoulder height so that you can sit lower back and down through the thighs. Chest gets to move a little closer to the thighs, less vertical to make all that work. Final chair sit variation, interlace the hands behind your back, straighten the arms, lift the hands towards the sky as you send the head even closer down to the legs, belly against your thighs. Chair pose, hands bound behind the back, hold it for one more breath. And then release the hands, stand fully up, reach the arms to the sky, right into tree pose. Place your right foot onto your left leg. Good old tree pose. Go up to your thigh if possible. Point your toes down to the floor, your right knee out towards the side, long edge of the mat so you get as much open and rotation through the hip as possible. Release the arms and release the right leg down. Switch over to the second side, left foot into tree pose. Of course, toes against the floor or ankle, calf are available. Lift the foot all the way up to the thigh if that is open to you. Take the arms up, find a nice steady gaze out in front of you that won't move or change to hold your back. job, release the arms, lower the leg. From here, friends, at the back of the mat, place your hands to the waist, look to the front edge of the mat, we're going to take a giant step forward, pick up your right foot, little bend behind the knees, and step forward into your lunge, lift the arms to the sky as you get there, full breath in, exhale, lower the hands down around the front foot, step back to downward facing dog, Walk the hands to the feet. Stand up, hands to the waist, and do it to the second side. Look forward to the front edge of the mat. Little bend in the knees, big step forward with the left foot. And then you can always edge it out if you need a few little more nudges. Arms to the sky. Breathe here. And then lower the hands around the front foot. Step back. Downward facing dog. Right away, bend the knees, walk the hands backwards to the foot. This is a repetition. We're doing it one more time on each side. As you come upright, step the right foot forward. Whew, catch the balance. Arms to the sky. Breath. The exhale, hands down. Step back, down dog. Walk the hands to the feet. Rise up, left side, step the left foot forward. My balance is all over the place this morning. Arms up. Hands down around the front foot, step back, downward facing dog. Let's take just a couple of extra breaths right here in downward facing dog. Back to balance. And now this time, look forward to your hands and step to the front edge of the mat. Stand tall with the arms high. And then we sweep right back down, forward fold. Swan dive down, half lift. Keep the right foot forward, step your left foot back, low lunge. 
Lift the right arm to the sky, revolve lunge. Set the hand to the inside of your foot. Spin the back heel down, come all the way up, warrior two. Pick out the torso, head and shoulders right on top of each other. Broad energy towards the long side of the mat. Lower the hands back down around the front foot as you spin the back heel up. Step your plank position, lower to the mat. Feel the chest up for cobra. Downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Stay on the right leg, lift the right leg high, three-legged dog. Pull the knee into the chest, hover forward. Do that twice more, lift the leg up and back. Hug the knee to the chest, hover forward. Lift the leg up and back. Hug the knee to the chest, hover forward. Shoot the leg back for full plank. Down dog. Three breaths right here. Now look forward to the hands. Step or jump to the front edge of the mat. Half lift, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky, palms to the center. Check in, pause for a moment before we take it to the second side. How can you best tune in for this flow? And let's go. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, swan dive, lower down. Half lift. Left foot stays forward. Step your right foot back into the lunge. Left hand high for revolved lunge. Set the left hand to the inside, spin the back heel down. Come upright, warrior two. Broaden the front knee. Closer to the pinky toe side of the foot. Try to sit low into the thigh with that extra help. There we go. Bring the hands back down around the front foot. Blue plank. Downward facing dog. We've got three-legged dog. Lift the left leg high. Pull the knee to the chest as you hover forward for one. Up and back, we've got three total here. Pull it in and up and back. Pull in and up and back. Lower the left leg down again. Breathe here, down dog. Look to the front of the mat, step jump or walk, feet to the top, half lift, forward fold, stand, reach the arms to the sky, and palms to the center of the chest. Again, pause here, take a couple of breaths, close the eyes if that's helpful, keep them open as you wish. Moving right along, Utkatasana, chair pose. Extend the arms, bend the knees, sit into the thighs. From here, do you take the arms, shoulder height, and palms together like they're clapping. You can cross with the thumbs to make that more doable. Now, instead of picking your head up to look past the fingers, Think more of like diving or swimming where we want to look straight down and let the upper arm bones hover right about your ears. Okay, lean the weight slightly into the left leg so that you can pick up your right foot and tap the toes back behind you. I'm keeping that bit of a bend in the left knee the entire way here. This is pose A, you stay and maintain or we're taking it through warrior three, lift the right leg up and tap it down to the ground, lift it up again, tap it down, 
glutes, hips on fire here. One more time, up, tap it down. Step the right foot in, stand all the way up. Chair pose, bend the knees, sit into the thighs. Bring the hands to shoulder height. Clap together, cross the thumbs. Hide the head, hide the ears. Lean the weight more towards the right foot. Tap the left foot back behind you. Really engage here in the abdomen. Don't let your right hip fall out to the side. Pull it back. And we've got our three lifts and tap. Lift, tap, lift, tap, and lift, tap. Step it in. Utkatasana, stand all the way up. I always find that one of the hardest pieces. Exhale, forward fold. Let's get back into a lunge. Right foot forward, step your left foot back. Twisted monkey, lower that back knee down. Hands move to the inside of your foot. Heel toe the front foot out to the side so you have a little more space. Pull the left heel in. We're looking for a quad stretch here. And the twisted piece of it, right hand goes up and around to find the opposite foot behind you. Right hand, hold on to your left foot or reach towards the left foot. Tuned in and notice the breath had gotten a little heavy. Here's your time to release. Bring it back down. Okay. Let go of the back foot. Switch sides, however is best for you to get there. I'm going to step left foot forward and right foot back, stepping through the front of the mat, and then lower the right knee, both hands to the inside. You could heel toe the left foot a bit out to the side, turn the hip knee, foot out 30 degrees, and then quad stretch, heel comes towards the butt. Lean your weight onto the right hand so it's a little easier. So rainbow lift the left arm. Hold on to the back foot if it's available. Keep squeezing the heel in towards your outer sit bone here in twisted monkey. And slow release up. We're going to plank pose. Set the hands, lift up the back knee, and slide your left foot back. Full plank pose. Notice where your hips, shoulders are in plank pose. And then I want you to go to downward facing dog. I hope obvious here, your hips are higher than your shoulders. You want to keep that lift of the hips as much as possible as we go into side plank. Balance on your right hand and the outer edge of the right foot. You can cross the left foot over, so inner edge of the left foot, and left arm up to the sky. So yes, your hips just fell down, but your work is to pay attention, keep tuning in, so that they stay as high as possible, less weight into that bottom shoulder. All right, so you stay right here or progressively take it into stacked legs. Still with me on the progression. Take your left foot into tree pose and you're trying to hit that tree pose with the foot above your knee, so onto your thigh. If you've got tree pose in that top leg, you want to keep it there. And everybody go full plank, two hands on the ground, point the knee out to the side. Now, point the knee down to the floor so you're in side plank balancing on the left hand and your right foot, right arm up to the sky. That knee is super close to the ground. It can always set down to really help you out in this position. 
Go back two hands to the mat, two feet to the mat, full plank pose. So it's a full 180 turn as we come into side plank. Let's try it on the second side. Start a downward facing dog. I'll try to go a little quicker on this side since we know where we're going. Bounce on the left hand, outer edge of the left foot, inner edge of the right, right arm spins to the sky. Again, staying and working here, or stack the feet, or take the right foot onto the left leg for tree pose. In tree pose, give and take, push your left leg into the right foot and vice versa. Can you switch hands? Right hand goes down, knee points out to the side, and then keep the right hand down as you Rotate right knee down and lift the left hand up. 180 tree pose inside plank. Bring both hands, both feet back down to the mat. Lower down to the mat. Cobra. We should be ready for child's pose here. Push it back. Hips to the heels. Child's pose. Okay, I want you to slither back down, full belly onto the mat. We're setting up for endless pose. Reach the arms out in front of you. It doesn't matter which side you start on, you might want to roll towards the side that it's easiest to see the video that you're watching. So I'm going to roll over to my left side so that the whole body is stacked along the back long edge of your mat. Endless pose from the outside doesn't look like a very hard pose. This is the first setup, but I hope that you're already finding that to keep your body balanced in one straight steady line and make it all look not so difficult is indeed an big task. Now we're taking that top leg, whichever is your top leg right now, and try to set it into tree pose like we just did in side plank. And you're still finding some balance here. The front hand can help by pressing fingertips to the floor to keep you balanced. Another way to make this more doable is to make your body in a slight V shape or U shape. Point the foot slightly more forward. All right, and then the big kicker here is to lift that top leg, try to hold on to the side of the foot or the big toe in your hand and stretch the leg up towards the sky. Now we set ourselves along the back edge of the mat because I don't want you to fall back off of the mat, so that can be really good feedback. Endless pose or Anahatasana. Release the top leg down. Really finely tuning in. And roll over towards the other side. I'm going to switch my whole body around so that I can still face y'all. Again, roll onto the edge of the body. You're trying to be as much in a straight line as possible. You can relax the head or prop it up underneath your hand. And that front hand helping to create your balance. Take the top foot into tree pose. There's a lot of powerful strong study asks. This power comes in. Really getting quiet, finding balance. Hook to your toe or the outside of your foot and stretch the leg as straight as you can. Don't let yourself roll back onto your glutes. If anything, I want you to fall forward 
onto your belly. Find that precarious lift, stay with it. And then slow and steady, release the leg down. Roll back to the belly and all the way to downward facing dog. Push yourself up and back. Lower your knees down to your yoga mat. Do two rounds of cat and cow breath. And then come all the way up to kneeling. This is camel pose with the arms extended. Extend the arms straight out in front of you. And you wanna keep pushing the front of your hips forward even as your torso leans back. You're gonna look at your fingertips the whole time. Squeeze the glutes a lot and strengthening in the quads here. Imagine hips forward, shoulders back, hold it, and then lift back to neutral. All right, I'm gonna spin around to my side to make gatekeeper easiest to see. You can face either direction and send your right leg out to the side. I like to turn the toes out as well. I find that easier. Now from the hips down to the knees, you want this to still feel like um, camel pose. So a little bit of a sense of pushing the hips forward, kind of tucking your seat underneath you. But we're adding a side bend. Take your right hand and try to hold on towards the ankle, knowing that you're probably catching the shin as far as you can creep that hand down. And then open the shoulders more towards the side. Try to push your hips a little bit forward. And that free arm, take it all the way up and over. Now in some imaginary bendy world, both hands would be connected down to your foot with this full turn still hips and shoulders, and that extension of the left quad, hip right over the knees still. We're kind of tuning in, finding the pieces of the puzzles that will work today. And come back to your neutral. Full kneeling, switch over, second side. Again, you can turn the toes out. Some like to keep the toes pointed more forward. It just changes the opening on the leg, whichever works best for you. Take your left fingertips and try to crawl down towards the line of the ankle. That usually takes the weight over towards that leg. So we wanna then put a little more attention and in tuning into the right knee here and quad. Make sure to push the hips forward. It might take the hands a little bit higher. And then left arm, I'm sorry, your right arm up to the sky and over. Keep looking to the side or even up to the sky for this one. Feet keeper pose. And come all the way back up through kneeling, take it down to all fours, again through cat and cow. All right, last big sequence here. It works into an arm balance, but first we'll find where the legs go. So start in downward facing dog and then step the right foot all the way up to your low lunge. Step the right foot back now so that you make your lunge shorter and your foot is behind the hands. Okay, shoot that right leg out to your left side. So it's underneath you, you're in a Twist in your torso by the way that you push the leg out. Set the hips all the way down to the mat so your legs are making an L shape. 
and then bend at the elbows, let the chest hover just above the mat, like in a low push-up. We're forming the picture with the legs and upper body here before we get into balancing that right leg onto the left arm. How fun that is to come through next. Straighten the torso, push through your feet, take it all the way back to downward facing dog. Same stages, second side, step the left foot all the way forward to the lunge and then drag it back the foot and shoot the leg underneath the right arm. The body comes into that twist, lower the hips down, legs in the L shape as much as possible. Turn and twist through the abdomen and lay it down. Looking for a good stretch to the IT band here. And finding some strength in the upper body. Okay, straighten the arms, push through the edges of the feet to lift your hips and walk it back to downward facing dog. Now the second time around, we're gonna adjust things just a little bit and see if we can get that twisted front leg to rest onto the arm bone. So we're back to the right side, step it through. And then the foot comes a step back. As you shoot the leg underneath the left arm, bend the elbows and try to connect your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. To do this, I keep the leg bent instead of straight. And they form a shelf for one another. Ideally, your right elbow is out in space, not on the body. Getting to this point is a lot of work in action. You can stay and work right there. To make our legs fly, take your face very close to the mat. Let the hips tilt more up and stretch the legs out if they reach off of the ground. Wherever you are, walk it all the way back now to downward facing dog. That takes a lot of tuning in, noticing where all of the pieces are to make it happen. Step your left foot forward and then drag it back. Shoot the left foot underneath the right arm, bend the elbows, bend the front knee to make that connection. Again, holding and sustaining right there. We're going a little bit more for it. It's like how much risk is happening for this practice, is right for this practice and then Unwind yourself back to downward facing dog. All the way down to child's pose. That extra risk and effort in the practice giving you a sense of deep release. Relief here. Take a couple more breaths. And then we'll adjust to spin around, lie all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. We're gonna give that pose one more shot, but doing it on our back so we can continue to tune in and see where the pieces of the puzzle best land together. Cross your right ankle over the left knee. It all starts in this figure four position. If your body, mind, emotions are telling you, I'm gonna stay right here for the next 30 seconds, go for it. If you wanna continue on to a little more pretzels with me, straighten the arms up to the sky, like I'm trying to do a handstand on the sky. Flex at the wrist. And then do a crunch. Lift your head and shoulders off of the mat. Now take that left elbow, 
to the outside of your right knee. You twist the limbs instead of the torso this time to get you there. Once you have your left elbow hooked to the outside of the right leg, try straightening one or both legs while keeping shoulder blades off the mat. You've got your arm balance. Twisted sage, bring it all back in. Knees to chest. Okay, second side. Left ankle over the right thigh and again, you can stay right here. Feels pretty nice. We're adding the next pieces of the puzzle. Hands straight up, flex the palms, do the crunch, lift head and shoulders up. Now the legs move towards the right as the torso and arms move towards the left so that you can hook your elbow to the outside of the knee. Good there, straighten the legs, trying to still keep that hook. And unwind yourself. Everyone takes knees back into the chest, open up the arms to a T, and let both knees fall over towards the right side. Let the knees come across your center and over towards the left side. For me, I can notice a shift in mindset when I really tune in to the work on the yoga mat. I'm driven to keep doing that throughout the day. Find the same. Bring the knees back to your middle. Here in any form of shoulder stand, first form is legs straight towards the sky, keeping the hips on the ground. So mostly like legs up the wall, but you don't have the wall. Next would be to really shift more towards plow pose, with the hips lifted, supported underneath your hands, but the feet way jackknifed over your head. Easier on head, neck, shoulders, wrists. Full shoulder stand, you're building the feet up towards the sky, really strong engagement in the belly, make sure this still feels good, sustainable along head, neck, and shoulders. Hold your shoulder stand option for three more breaths. And then gradually build yourself back into that knees, into the chest, reverse child stance. Friends, if there's any last bits of unwinding counter pose that you'd like here, go for it. And from that counter pose, find your pose of stillness, be it a seated, or Shavasana lying down on your back. So Shavasana supine or seated here. And that stillness allowing the breath to draw you in. You have more time, feel free to stay. 
a longer Ushavasana. For those that are ready or need to move along, come back to your seated position. Palms together, thumbs to the sternum. Offer here the final sound of OM as a way of transitioning us from this tuning in practice on the mat to staying tuned in off of the mat. Empty out the breath. Take a deep breath in. Full gratitude to you, each other, this practice. Thank you.